What's up guys, Anders here with another video for you. Today we're going to take a look at Sage, newly released today with the Succession. So we're actually going to be taking a look at his Succession kit. I leveled him to 61 today and did a little bit of grinding to get all the skills at least unlocked in Succession. I don't have all the skills. I believe if you want to get every single skill for the Succession version of Sage, you're going to need around 1800 to 1900 SP. But really... You don't need that much if you just want to have a taste of, of what Sage has to offer. So around 1000 to 1100 should be okay. So you can at least play around with all of the skills he has to offer. Um, we're going to do this basically like we always do. Go down the list of all the skills and then we'll talk about the different skills and the different kind of gimmicks that Sage has right now. I'm not going to really talk about whether or not he's strong just because he just came out today. Um, there are some bugs with the kit. We're missing uh, the awakening. We don't really know right now. There's no confirmation on whether or not that 30% damage that you usually get from your awakening if that is missing as well on his kit so that influences the damage a lot so there's a lot of things we don't know we just want to look at the skills so the first skill is the auto attack of course the absolute kive mastery just left click it doesn't knock back on the jump hit and on good sprint hit this is what it looks like i believe the jump hit i haven't seen it let me see what let me see if we can uh, get that looks nice it looks nice but as usual you usually do use this to kind of bring mobs to you if you're grinding high-end areas no other reason to really level this up um, the next one is one of my favorite skills honestly Autor's fist a prime um, it's the f skill five second cooldown with a knockdown all dp minus 15 it's a down smash as well decent range and decent damage it's unprotected but this is what it looks like you can also use it after certain skills so it's not a bad skill, it's quick, it's a low cooldown, good enough honestly if you're going to be grinding a lot of SP at uh, lower end zones or um, potion piece areas, um, nice to you know kill a pack with one skill. It's such a low cooldown you can actually chain it with a lot of these other skills. The next one is Spatial Fissure. So Spatial Fissure, another one that I like a lot, low cooldown as well. Surprisingly low cooldown considering this skill gives you an all accuracy rate plus 18% for 10 seconds, which is absolutely insane. The damage modifiers are also very, very good. And this is what it looks like. So there you go. Really nice skill. Pretty quick, I'd say. Um, that's one thing that uh, Sage kind of struggles on. A lot of his skills are kind of slow casting, so a lot of his passives tend to be cast speed. So if you can get some add-ons with cast speed, um, that will help him a lot. But uh, Spatial Fissure, decent skill. That accuracy rate plus 18%, probably going to be nerfed, uh, if I'm honest, because it's just too good. On such a low cooldown, you basically always have 18%. It is unprotected, but uh, for the most part... Um, you should be okay. You can use this like pre-buff. You're going to be dueling for a spot or whatever. Um, again, uh, one thing I should note before I forget, because I know I will. Plus 40 of MP recovery per every hit. Uh, from what I can tell, Sage has pretty good sustain in terms of mana and okay in terms of health. So uh, you won't need a ton of potions if you're going to be grinding on Sage. So just keep that in mind. I know a lot of people keep asking me that when new classes come out. How is his grind? From my experience at Miru and Polly, not too bad in terms of potions. So next up we have Shift E. Uh, it's a quick slot available as well. 10 second cooldown. Forward guard while using the skill. Although I'll say that the forward guard drops off pretty quick. And um, CC is only on uh, PvE so we don't really care about that. This is what it looks like. Uh, yeah, protected but as you saw it just goes away really really quickly. So you want to be careful with that. A lot of these skills though, as you wind up these skills, uh, you can use his dash to kind of protect yourself and then unleash the skill afterwards. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the dash. So next up is Void Gateways Shift RMB. 8 second cooldown. Really, really strong skill for PvE at the very least. 100% crit. Crazy amounts of hit damage. Floating on good hits. Air smash. It's just... Pretty decent skill. The only downside, as you saw, it's kind of slow. Um, there's no way to really cancel it, as far as I can tell right now. 
Um, so yeah, that's the one downside of that skill. That's why I think I have like a DP up on, on the add-on. So uh, because there's no protection, you're going to be using this. It's going to kill or do a lot of damage to mobs, but you're going to be hit uh, quite a bit while you do that. The next up is the Autor's Mark. Autor's Mark is actually a pretty good skill as well. Down E, 8 second cooldown. It's the 100%. Um, though it's a bound, unfortunately. Uh, it would have been, I guess, kind of broken if it was a knockdown or something like that. But it is a bound with forward guard. Again, while casting. I'll show you what that means in a second. And all evasion rate minus 15% for 10 seconds and 100% crit. Just a really good skill overall. That evasion rate down is kind of killer. Couple that with the accuracy buff. Basically, this is class right now with just those two skills. Evasion killer, uh, pretty much. Forward guard while casting, so I'll show you what this looks like. So there you go. Uh, you can, of course, like I said, I'll go into it a little bit later, but the dash will cancel the pow like the charge up of most of these skills. So you don't actually have to, um, as you saw there, uh, have to cast it. You can just dash, and as soon as you come out of the dash, you can instantly use it. Um, not not bad. The next up is Shift Q. Um, okay, damage skill, 10 second cooldown. As as far as I can tell, stiffness, floating. Um, the big thing about the skill is uh, it's a vacuum, even in PvP. So it vacuums all the mobs together and all the players together. It's unprotected though, so you're going to be careful uh, using that skill. But uh, overall, having a vacuum is always strong as we've seen with Nova. This is nowhere near as strong as Nova because Nova can just launch her vacuums and then whatever it touches it will get vacuumed. You actually need to be close for this one. But nevertheless, I think a vacuum is always good. Uh, next up, we have a really, really good skill. Forward right click. I really like this skill. Basically, it's a dash forward. And then you'll get a little buff called flow form recall. You can then use forward right click again to basically do another dash backwards. It's always going to be backwards. And these are always going to be protected. And it does a lot of damage in PvE. So this is what it looks like. So you go in there, you have a three seconds to do the skill again, and it will do it backwards. So the the flow is that second part, as you saw there. It deals the same amount of damage. Um, it's all super armor as well, although I'll say, I'll show you again. The f super armor, as you saw, falls off pretty quickly. So at the end of that dash, you're unprotected. So you need to be careful about that. But overall, it's pretty quick and just looks really nice as well. Does good, good damage. Illusion Expansion, uh, Shift F, 7 second cooldown. Uh, pretty okay skill. It's a debuff, so minus 20% attack and cast speed for 10 seconds. Fairly quick. It's a stiffness as well. This is what it looks like. So not bad. Um, there is also the flow, as you saw there. You just hold F, and it'll be a knockdown, and also deal about uh, 10 hits of this damage. So it's fairly good, uh, but unfortunately, it's just unprotected completely. So if you want to use this in PvP, you got to be careful. Um, it's going to be unprotected. So if you're in a group scenario, probably not a good idea to use this. Um, but it does look really cool. It does decent damage. I like how quick it is. Um, so, you know, um, can't really complain too much about the skill. Next up, we have Spatial Collapse. That's a 12 second cooldown, at least at level one. Uh, let's see, level four. Yeah, it's 11 seconds. One second. Uh, not super <laughs> drastic change. 100% crit though. A lot of hits on this skill. Minus 20 DP for 10 seconds. Kind of very strong. Actually rate plus 15% is a really good modifier for any skill. And it's also forward guard while casting though and a bound. So it's protected CC down F. This is one of those charge skills that you can cancel with a dash. There's also hold F uh, after to do a floating CC and more damage. This is what it looks like. So there you go, like holding F will do an, an, another explosion as you saw. Uh, all of his skills look really cool to be honest. Um, let's see what else we got here. We did down F. I'll go through the cancels uh, in a little bit, we're almost there. The Autor's Energy, so this is his 200%, which um, 
I don't know if it will be good. It seems pretty strong on paper. I've seen some clips, but we don't, you know, we'll, we'll see <laughs> in a real scenario whether or not this skill actually does damage. Um, in terms of the normal skill, 10 second cooldown, super armor, 100% uh, crit. Decent skill, I'll have to say. It can combo into Atamagia. And now Atamagia at prime is a 40 second cooldown with massive damage and crit and super armor and bounce. So this is what both of these skills look like. So you do that and you hold R, RMB. And you can see the AoE is just massive. Um, does decent damage. I like it, but it's a 40 second cooldown, unfortunately. So you won't be able to really spam this much. And uh, this skill, as you saw, Atur's energy. Um, it takes a bit to kind of go through. So what you can do is, again, use the dash to charge up the skill, dash, and then unleash it wherever you need to. Now, the e-buff for Succession is called Prime Optimization. It's a three-minute cooldown, as all e-buffs are. And it gives Sage Magic AP plus 30 for 30 seconds, crit rate plus 50%, crit damage plus 20%, and you get super armor for 15 seconds while you use the skill. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, we have the super armor for 15 seconds. Um, as far as I could tell, it seems a little bugged. Um, I'm not sure if it was just me, but the super armor isn't working. I'm sure, you know, we're the first region to get it. I'm sure those will be fixed by next week. But uh, it allows you to do all these skills that are unprotected, basically, with protection for 15 seconds and all that extra damage that you're doing. Kind of insane. So <laughs> it's a pretty powerful uh, e-buff that can actually, with a um, another passive of his, can be lowered in cooldown so you can use it even faster. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. Uh, Illusion Barrier is his Q-block, so he has a forward guard. It's a Q block, all AP plus 20 for 10 seconds on all good blocks. This is what it looks like. So if you get attacked in any by a mob or by a player, you'll get instantly a 20 AP buff. So not bad. Hash has something like this. Um, not too bad at all. As you saw, it, um, it doesn't last forever. It lasts maybe like 10 seconds or so. So um, you want to keep that in mind. You just can't hold Q block forever. The reset skill is a pretty interesting skill. It's a 10 minute cooldown because it's so powerful. Your super armor while you use this. Um, it's quick slot only. What it does is that it resets all the cooldowns of all your class skills. Except optimization. And things like emergency escape. So V and uh, black spirit rage transfer and all that. Those are not... Uh, affected by reset so if you use atamagia you use reset right after you can use atamagia again if you want so it's pretty powerful 10 minute cooldown i think is fair and balanced uh, we'll see if that has changes of course but for the most part i think for now that seems pretty good for me so rift chain is the dash i keep talking about so six second cooldown it's an iframe at the start iframe while you're vanished so you actually vanish you don't you can't see another sage that is in rift chain that's really important because it kind of throws off people and then when you appear again you're super armor so keep that in mind uh, there's no collision while you're in this kind of rift chain thing you can spam it as much as you want it consumes stamina so 300 stamina is a lot but basically you can use this as much as you want as long as you have the stamina. However, if you are using it and you run out of stamina, you will sometimes freeze up. Let's see if I can do this again. See, it will, it will kind of take you out of the rift chain immediately when you're out of stamina. So keep that in mind. Sometimes I've had this happen a lot today and you're in the rift chain but you run out of stamina and you'll freeze up you can't actually do any actions or anything so that kind of sucks the thing about the rift chain is that in succession you gain a super armor for one second after using the skill so when you use it you come out your one second buff as you saw like that briefly need to wait for the cooldown so the cooldown pertains to the one second buff so you can spam the skill whenever you want but you'll only get the super armor cooldown or the super armor buff 
every six seconds. So it's important to note that. Also, the one second super armor buff, as far as I can tell, is not working either. So <laughs> there seems to be an issue with a little super armor buff with Sage right now. But, you know, I'm sure I'll get fixed. Uh, basically, why is that important? Because every six seconds, you can use any unprotected skill after a Rift Chain. Allowing you to like get a knockdown CC, like something with Outdoor's Fist, for example. You can use this and go instantly into it while you're protected. So you'll have a knockdown CC that's protected for you know that duration. So it's not bad. It's a really interesting mechanic with Sage. Um, something else I wanted to, to mention. Okay, so if you are using this skill, for example, you can move it and then use it somewhere else. It works with a lot of his skills. Uh, let's see, uh, for example, down F. And then you can launch it here, for example. Uh, that's something really cool. Basically, these skills mostly tend to not have protection at the hit of the skill. So that's their downside, right? They deal a lot of damage, but their protection is usually only in the beginning part, the charge up phase of the skill. So what you can do is charge up, then you iframe dash, and you unleash it somewhere where you think you're safe, you won't be CC'd, um, or your opponent can't see. So that's, I think, the general gameplay that you're going to be looking at. Um, of course, also remember that once this gets fixed, of course, Succession will be able to be protected once they unleash that skill. So you'll be able to turn skills that don't have protection on the hit and have protection for that one second. So really good skill. You have to really play around with the kit. And it tells you exactly all the all the skills that actually work with this. Usually all the flows and the big uh, like casting skills will work. So really, really good skill. It's basically your bread and butter skill for this kit. The next one is going to be Ator's Thorn. This is a cool skill. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Um, it has a little cooldown RMB. It's a knockback. The big thing about it is a movement speed minus 50% for 10 seconds. That's pretty, pretty amazing. This is what it looks like. You can spam it if you want. So it's not bad. The range is decent. So if you're, um, you're someone's trying to get away from you, you can just throw the spear at them and they'll slow down massively. And then you can uh, follow up if you want with, uh, you know, some sort of uh, mobility skill so not bad obviously don't you don't really need much uh outside of like maybe what uh which one do you get the move i think the movement speed i guess is only on the absolute so if you really want the movement speed debuff i would i would just take this last honestly uh once you get the other skills that you want and then finally we have in terms of skills we have down right click which is a 20 second cooldown this is essentially like the shy bongo skill it's forward guard while casting minus 20 dp and bound on every good summon hit i'll show you what it looks like it's pretty cool so you throw a little thing and it will summon this thing and every single target will get bound on every hit for quite a quite a while um so it's kind of like a safe area as well where you can cast that skill and then kind of go into it if you feel like uh, maybe you're going to be, you know, block jumped or something. Someone's going to be, you know, or hatch is going to get behind you. You can just use that skill, go inside it, and uh, they don't want to <laughs> get behind you anymore because they'll just get CC'd. It's an interesting skill. It's kind of area denial, zone denial. It's pretty good in that sense. But as of damage, it does basically no damage, honestly. Um, from what I could tell, at least in PvE, it just did very pitiful damage, even maxed out at Absolute. So, um, we'll see. Maybe it'll do better in PvP, but uh, for the most part, it looks like a more uh, CC net kind of skill. In terms of his passives, he has cast speed and accuracy rate, which is just really good. That's what he wants. Accuracy rate is just strong in any class. At level 63, though, I will tell you, I've never seen... Uh, a passive that strong all special attacks plus two percent is insane so the fact that he has this it's just too too good you want to level this guy to 63 for maximum damage two percent is just so good uh his other passive for succession uh there is a bug right here where you can't see it but it's magic ap for all of them 
So there's that, the Ator's Eye. Um, essentially, a lot of us thought that this was going to be like a teleport, but it's not a teleport. It just basically means whenever you go to Akman, Histria, Kurtiga, Sekraya, all of those little gateways or the openings, I think Akman would be the node manager and uh, Sekraya would be that, that little thing where you use the key and Kurtuga, same thing, the doorway. You just go up to there and you don't actually need the item needed to enter anymore so you just go in as a sage so if you don't like sage it's still good to level 1 to 60 tag it if you need a free key to go back into sakraya or history or Achman if you need to pretty powerful passive to be honest but i think more <laughs> most people thought it was going to be a teleport uh, and i don't really think that's uh, that's the case we have augmentation which is just a basic magic ap plus 20. we also have a uh, prime overdrive which is his kind of stacking skill i really thought this was going to be a lot more than it what it turned out to be like guardian has a passive like this where you have stacks uh, so you get to 10 stacks and you get 10 percent casting speed for 10 seconds uh, cer certain skills will give you this stack and you can just keep doing skills to get more stacks you know so if you want, uh, you can just stack up to um, to 10. Let's see if we can do that. It's just the easiest way to get there. So we have plus 10%. And then if you look at succession, there's a thing where every time you go past the 10 stacks, your cooldown of your optimization e-buff will go down by five seconds. So the more skills that you use while you're max stacks, the faster you're able to use optimization so the more damage you're outputting it's really interesting i think it's going to be really powerful in pve at high-end areas um, pvp it's a little harder to keep your stacks up uh, so i don't think it'll be that useful there but it's something and in terms of yeah i think that's pretty much it we um remember we're missing two skills from awakening here uh we don't have awakening so it's gonna be a month from the launch of this class so today it's gonna to be a month so mid-april we'll get the awakening for sage it's gonna be a while unfortunately so we don't know uh, if this means that we're missing damage we don't know if that means uh, uh, basically we'll get awakening and then we'll get the succession awakening skills that we we need to get we don't know if we're gonna get rebombs before awakening it's hard to say so um, even when we get awakening we're gonna have to wait for core skills we have to wait for that new awakening skill um, if sage gets one like all the new classes today got new awakening skills uh, there's a lot of things that we're still missing so if you are not really sure about the class you don't know if the class kind of fits your style i recommend just take it easy passive and uh, see how it goes and uh, see what else people are saying i'm going to be playing the class a lot more and uh, doing more videos for you guys in terms of what it can do grinding. I had to do a lot more PvP with it. Um, all I did today was kind of like duel for spots because it was kind of crazy. But, you know, that was not really PvP uh, when you have like no SP. <laughs> it's not really, uh, doesn't show you what the class can do. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the class. I think it looks amazing. Uh, visually, really, really cool. What do you think about the the fact that we're missing two skills do you really think that we're missing 30 percent damage like everyone else is saying which skill do you think is the coolest looking for me um i would have to say it's ator's fist and the this one the ator's mark just because it just looks so cool oh let me uh let me show you before i leave you guys the 100 percent so what it looks like so you can kind of see it not bad not bad all right guys thanks again for watching thanks for listening i'll see you all in the next one take care